It's been a week. In a world where news moves at lightning speed, even chaotic speed, consider the breadth and importance of what's happened in just five days. On Monday, the Supreme Court ruled Donald Trump stays on the ballot in Colorado. Then Super Tuesday and the very short primary season ends. On Wednesday, Nikki Haley drops out of the presidential race ahead of President Biden's State of the Union last night, Thursday. And today, Donald Trump welcomes Hungarian strongman Viktor Orban to Mar-a-Lago. It is just the kind of week that has many Americans exhausted, fueled by a growing us versus them mentality. And stretching out ahead is the longest general election in U.S. history. I want to bring in Princeton University professor and MSNBC political analyst Eddie Glaude Jr. You know the saying, Eddie, what a year this week has been. I, I, I don't want to call it the new normal. I, I don't know. Maybe it's the new abnormal normal. Well, I think, Chris, I think your lead is it, how we how you frame the conversation is so important. We're in a moment where where everything is in transition. Everything is in flux. And so, you know, the standing assumptions about our politics, the standing assumptions about our relationships to each other are actually all kind of jumbled together. They're thrown up in the air. And so, you know, the best thing we can do is just buckle up um, and focus on what's in front of us. And that is, in some ways, the future of the country. So I, I imagine you get this question, but uh, in, in some critical moments in history, whether it was after Columbine or after 9-11 or after the 2000 election, people would come up to me and say, you know, they're, I, I don't know how you're doing it. Now, I've get, gotten that country for the last question for the last couple of years easily. And, and I saw you share this piece on X from Dante Stewart about reading James Baldwin in an election year. He wrote this. If there is anything that on my part and in these days that I have crawled back to, it is the way that Baldwin, as Morrison wrote in her eulogy to him, gave us language to articulate our perils, to deeply understand our place in the world, not simply as humans, but as people who come from a battered, battered and worn and complex history. Can Baldwin, who you know so well, help us find the language to process of this moment? So many people, Eddie, are trying to find a way to process it. Well, I think Baldwin is among many. You know, we have to reach for artists to find language to understand our confusion, uh, to find language to give voice to our, our dissatisfaction, the fact that in so many ways the ground beneath our feet is unsettled. Uh, you know, last night, the president in his State of the Union, Chris, said a whole range of things. You know, people have been focusing on his performance. But he said something that really struck me. He said, the days of trickle-down e trickle economics are over. It was this dramatic announcement that the age of Reagan is done. And the question that I kept asking myself after I heard it was, what's going to replace it? And I know we gave us pieces of it, but that's what we're feeling over and over again, that the ways in which we went about living our lives, that the solidity of what it meant to be Americans have just kind of lost its way. We don't know what it is. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's slipping through our hands. And so there's a deep sense of anxiety, and that anxiety has everything to do with the flood of news that's overwhelming us every single day, not only on television, but on social media and in our conversations with our fellows. And there is a cumulative effect isn't there, Eddie? I mean, each one of this week's events is a domino. And I didn't even mention, for example, um, the long list of reports of children starving in Gaza. It was the warmest winter on record that just ended, so climate change marches on. It really struck me one of our correspondents today was out talking to college students, about a dozen of them. Half of them had not watched the State of the Union. The other half didn't even know the State of the Union was going on. And, I mean, it, it could be at least partly, you know college students better than I do now, um, among the people who just say, I can't take it anymore. Like, I just have to disconnect. Mm -hmm. And what is the impact of a disconnected electorate? You know, I don't think it's disconnection. Some people may be disconnecting, Chris. But imagine... A storm. You know, I grew up on, I grew up near the Gulf of Mexico, so I grew up in hurricanes. And, you know, when the wind, when the force of the wind is battering the house, you know, sometimes you close your eyes. Sometimes you try to find um, 
something else to draw your attention because the fear is so deep it cuts to the marrow of the bone. But that doesn't mean you're not paying it, that you don't know you're in a storm. That doesn't mean that you've, you're somehow going to be reckless and walk out in the middle of it, unless it's the eye, of course. And so part of what we have to understand is that sometimes when the headwinds are so strong, you close your eyes, but that doesn't mean you don't know the headwinds are there. And so there's a lot of information. We're in the longest campaign that in the history of presidential campaigns. Sometimes folk are going to take a deep breath and close their eyes, but they know the stakes. They know the stakes.